Well, today's adventure then. Actually, you need a tin hat for this one, a virtual tin hat. I'm not sure this is any good, because we're going looking for a bomb dump. I've looked for it before and been unsuccessful. And now using this rather grim uh, photograph, I think I've identified the problem. I was looking on the left hand side. It's actually on the right hand side because this uh, photograph is upside down, if you see what I mean. So we'll have to we'll see if we can find the, uh, have any better luck today. So my wife said to me this morning, I hope you're not doing one of your stupid things today. She said, what are you doing? So I'm looking for a bomb dump. She shook her head and walked away. <laughs> we all survive, you see. <laughs> right, let's go and have a look. Get away from this noisy road. That blossom, flower or whatever. That's a pretty sight. First thing we have to do is pick up the mineral line then. The old mineral railway line. But first we'll have a quick uh, look at one of our old favourites. Which is that. To Hospital Bridge. Yeah, I've filmed that a few times. Okay, well that's going the wrong way for us. It's on its way to Drybrook. We're all the way in the Lydney direction. Which is down this direction. Oh, she's looking pretty. Beautiful in there. Looking for our first sign of railway. Shouldn't be too long. Blossom everywhere. We'll just take this side shoot to pop down here just a sec. That's very polite, isn't it? There on our right is the uh, spoil heap from the Lightmore Colliery. And this is the supporting lake. But they needed the water to keep their steam machinery going. Or whether they were just pumping it out, I don't know. What's a colliery use all this water for, folks? It's down that way. Uh, we'll pass it later. Don't think we can see it from here today. Actually, it's just down there. That's part of the colliery buildings there. It's a listed building, that one. None of which has got anything to do with what we're doing today. I thought it was worth a look. First off, some rather dilapidated sleeper fence posts. Wonder what the road was like when that was a sapling. Before serving its time on the railway. Back out to the main drag. And we'll continue our search. A mouldy old gatepost. I'm guessing that had nothing to do with the railway. But that certainly did. Broad gauge rail fence post. Strainer in both directions. Still with some bolts in it, and if you look very carefully, some plain wire. Wow. I guess there's a good possibility that broad gauge railway stock run over these low rails. That's a picture, a nice bit of wire, plain wire hanging off. Sitting quietly in the forest. I may need to be walking quietly in the forest too. Gonna move on because we're not making much ground at the moment. The railway disappears into the distance, or the track bed anyway. I've witnessed to it all in the dappled shade, some more fence posts. They're everywhere over the forest, these things. In amongst the blossom. You just need to point the camera anywhere around here, 
a beautiful sight. You're welcome. The railway is following the undulations, cutting one minute and the embankment the next. As the ground rises and falls all round us. And now we're making a little bit of progress, not much, but a bit. We still have the Lightmore colliery spoil heap on our left. It's huge. I'm walking like it, but I've forgotten how long. This is the building we could see from the lake earlier on. This is what happens to a listed building when nobody would take it on. Won't well, be around much longer, I don't think. We now detour off the track, so we'll step onto that fence. We detour round here and then we'll pick, uh, pick the railway up later. Our path continues down there. You won't see very much through the trees. Look where the colliery once stood. There's now a huge woodyard. We're approaching a left turn which will take us back to track level sooner or later. A slightly better view of the woodyard. Just inside their boundary if you can make it out. A line of fence posts. I guess there were sidings and all sorts of railway infrastructure down here and during the day. We're still heading south. Fence post on our left, and then on the right. So I'm not sure if we're inside the boundary or out. And the answer is we were outside the property of the railway. So what we were looking at was the right hand side as we're heading south. Because here we've got another left. This takes us down to join the railway. Now we should have fence posts on our left and right. That's the theory. There are the posts which are now on our right. So now we need to look for some on the other side. Nothing there at the moment, but I think this deviation that they put in, they probably removed some, a little bit farther down. Loads of posts on that side, crikey. On a very slight embankment. What a beautiful sight. Great row of fence posts, some still with wire. And they bore witness to the thank you. And they bore witness to the railway. Chugging along here, wow. That's a privilege to see those, isn't it, I guess? We'll be here too much longer. Still nothing to our left. As yet. And as we say that. Right on the left, first of the sleeper fence posts. I think there'll probably be better examples a little bit farther on. Usually is. Some broad gauge rail, a double strainer post. We need our run from vintage trains and abandoned railways to tell us what the official name for that is. Well, I hope you can see them on there. I've never seen such a collection of fence posts going on and on. This is what I like when you've got fence posts up above you. 
to sort of different somewhere. Remains of a telegraph pole or a tree. It looks quite round. And some more fence posts. Just can't stop taking the photograph. It's just so beautifully composed, isn't it? Just point the camera where you go. I think we'll have to have a Parkinson's Walks railway sleeper calendar or something. Meanwhile, we are making a little bit of progress. Just a little bit. Go figure. One there on the extreme left is in pretty good order. The next one down the line is a stump. Strange. Thank you, post on that side as well. They're slightly on the left of centre. Oh, broad gauge. Straining, well, double straining post again. And this one has been embraced by a tree. I don't know who will win that battle. Over on our left, as we just come to a small embankment, fence post down either side. But over to our left is a rather strange feature. It shows on the map. I've tried and failed several times to find it. I've got to film on it somewhere. Deed out. The old engines would have rattled down here, wouldn't they? Fairish. With a load on from the colliery. Heading for Lydney in the dock. Perhaps. We've still got spring green in the uh, trees. They're more or less in leaf now. Beautiful day to be out here. There don't appear to be any sign of the boar here. A bit unusual. Normally down here. They're everywhere digging up the uh, verges. Well, what have we got here? You know, I've walked past this, must be dozens of times. Never seen it before. It's a mile post on broad gauge rail. Can no longer see what mileage it said. Oh, what a beautiful relic. Looking at the size of the bolts or screws, they didn't want to come out. The pattern of time. And the broad gauge rail. You can just about make out the V-shape. Looking carefully, we lined up with that one. Look at this round here a bit smoother. Hidden away all this time. Gorgeous. Right. I think we're not far off it now. If memory serves. This is where the branch took off for the bomb dump then. We just about to make it a flat big round. And down there, down to our left, and through there. And there should be the remnants of a signal box, you think, or at least some ground levers. There's something there, and you can just about see it. Could be a fallen sleeper, but I think it's part of the construction. Signal box or ground frame. A few concrete sleepers lying about. And maybe a sill of some sort. I wonder. Right where you would expect to find it, so then with a chance. There's a small pile of stones there, look. That'll be part of our signal box or ground frame. Any doubt whatsoever. And I'm going for signal box. My film. Sight of then. There we go. 
Those are the uh, securing pad bolts for the chair, I imagine. Unfortunately, it's too heavy to lift. To see what's on the other side. We're on the railway looking south, and the crossing track you can see there is just that accessing a crossing track. We'll find the spruce ride later. But this then leads to our bottom up there. So it gives us a reference, a starting point. Quick squint at the map. And away we go. We'll have a quick look up here first, I fancy. We're going to start our search. This is our branch line. And we've just stood coming in to the bomb dump. There's several paths here, that's good. I was expecting to have to tramp through the undergrowth. Maybe not. And where you see the pine trees, that's where the bomb dump or the loading and unloading dock was. You can see how it all spreads out here. Yeah. Good. The rails have been uplifted, of course. Very really nice, even so. There's some nice logs there. I fancy that's the lunch spot. Sounds good to me. Well, I can't think of many places uh, around about. I'd rather be at the moment. Even for a sunny day. Our sun clouds around. In the middle of the forest with all this fresh green history all around. We're actually sat in the middle of the arrivals departure area I suppose. Uh, the trains and the trucks would come, unload their cargo of munitions, disperse it into the woods and then take it out as and when I guess. Very nice. So this silent now apart from Bird song and me whittling on, of course. Not a cue, thank you. But uh, back in the day, this would have resounded to the sounds of trucks, occasional train, men shouting at each other in an American voice, no doubt. Absolutely amazing sight. And now all is peace and quiet. And in a minute, we're going to go and see if we can find where they actually stored the munitions. Now they were all removed in the 1950s, which is good because there were chemical weapons, uh, chemical bombs and weapons and ordnance, ordnance, that's the word I knew I'd get there, uh, amongst all the normal conventional bombs. But it was uh, all cleared in the 1950s, so there won't be anything left at all, I hope. Um, but hopefully we can find where they were because surely they had to put this on a hard stand, didn't they? They wouldn't just load them onto the ground, surely not. Unless they were palletised, I suppose. Mm. But they were a little bit uh, careless because they just sort of tarpaulin over it. They didn't have any special shelters for it. Just put a tarp over the top. Uh, a couple of them had sort of um, round Nissen hut type shaped things, but they were open at either end, so. Didn't take too much care of their munitions, but perhaps they had protective coatings on it, so who knows. Anyway, we're going to have a look, see if we can find anything. I have looked before, zilch, nada, nothing. Better luck this time. What a beautiful spot to spend your war. There's a roadway to either side of us now. And that would have been the railway sidings. And this, I suppose, was where they loaded and unloaded. This little fella's giving it a try. You could be 100 feet tall one day. There'll be a broadleaf giving it a shot as well. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Just point your camera, and that's it. You've got a lovely shot. We'll wander down the right hand leg and back on the left hand one. Searching all the while. 
Plenty of logs to have your uh, brake on here. Marvellous. I don't know if you're supposed to. I guess you are. And the last time I was here I did get some fines. But that was a while ago. So I'm scanning and scanning. They're not offering any guarantees. Deceptively, the woods either side look passable. When we get in there, I'm not too sure. Over there, I don't know if you can see it, is the track we'll be returning on in a minute. We're coming up to the junction shortly. The junction point, and also the uh, entrance to the dump. And just out there is Spruce Drive. Now we'll take a look and there's a story connected with that. First I want to look in there. That's the first site of a minor bomb dump. That first site with Spruce Ride, of course, not Drive. There's Spruce Ride in the background. Not too promising. It was right on this corner. There is a flatter area down there. Take a look. Plenty of stone here, but not uh, concrete. So, part of a structure. Or perhaps they were just clearing the site. Very flat area. Now, I know there's a bomb dump here because I've seen the photograph from the map. But there's no hard standing which uh, didn't bode well. A green area, right in the middle. And farther away than I would have, would have expected. But then with a chance. This is the easiest of all of the uh, bump dumps, mission stores, to find because of its location, but it uh, didn't bode well for the others, I have to say. We'll make our way out here to this place right. We're hoping to find the odd anti-aircraft gun still left here. I we'll could use one of those. I'm making the assumption I can get out of here. Back to our friends, the railway sleeper posts. And back onto the railway. And down here just a little way. There's an area to our left, which looks more promising than what we've just been looking at. But uh, the photograph doesn't agree. Massive holly tree there. Oh. Railway then. Let's go stand in the middle. The railway heads off down there. And we do a quick turn. And up there. Where it's a spruce ride. Is that way to Speech House? And that way to Cineford. Now, during the war, the munitions were arriving by rail and by road, and this was where they crossed each other. And the Americans were told to wait at the crossing and check there weren't any trains coming, but uh, it didn't suit them, so they didn't really bother. So the engine drivers were told they had to stop and check for trucks. Didn't suit them. As somebody said, if you were coming up there with a full load with banker engines on the back, it's very difficult to coordinate a stop just where you wanted to and take a look. So they didn't really pay much attention. Now, considering this was the second largest bomb dump in the country, American bomb dump that is. Sorry about that. Friday. Then we were 
seconds away from a rather nasty explosion, I would think, with trucks filled with munitions, train filled with munitions, and all these bombs in the dump. Oh. I would think it would go up like a nuclear bomb, to be honest. Uh, well, let's get back on track then, see if we can find anything. A better view where the tracks diverged. I'm going to take this one. It's the right hand one as we go back, which was the left hand one as we arrived. Simple. A forestry commission notice, which would want to be valid in the war years. Now that's that's what we were trying to find. This uh, spruce ride, that's the mineral line. And that's what we were just trying to find without success. Now the next one, this track curves, and it's right on the curve, which is about where we are now. Take a look, which is straight across there. Look for access point. Don't know what that is, modern or otherwise. Looks like a fence loop, doesn't it? Curving track, you know, you just need some access. There's a little bit of tarmac here leading towards the woods. Might have been useful for a forklift. It looked promising from the outside. Yeah. We've walked back a bit from the curve, so if we walk this away, we should come up to it. Oh, we're coming to go. I suppose we should be looking for younger trees that were planted 50 years ago. But I guess in 50 years they're the same size as the rest. Another thing of course, if there was a hard standing, it's had 50 years of pine needles dropping on it. Could make it a bit difficult to see. Well the photograph can't lie, so we're actually standing on that particular, thank you very much, rook, crow, whatever you are. So we're actually standing where the dump was. No hard standing, perhaps they stored them on the ground there on pallets. Okay, well we've got one more chance. Here's a feature that would have helped us locate ourselves or orientate ourselves but um, this didn't appear on the photograph so I think it's probably a forestry commission road. Perhaps it was built so that they could jump around the old uh, bomb dump rather than have to drive through it. I don't know. Anyway, a bit late now. Hopefully somebody watching can make some sense of all this. And all I've done is grabbed a photograph, done about 10 minutes research and wandered off down here, which is probably why we haven't succeeded. Well, I think the uh, photograph has was given us lots of clues. Perhaps there's just nothing here, eh? Possible. Anyway, somebody might better fill us all in. Joining the main drag again now. Was our lunch spot. This is where the two tracks join up again. Looking where we've just come from. Which means our last hope is down there then. Okay, give it a shot. 
hopefully this is promising. The uh, track coming in from the right, right centre, that's the uh, branch line that we first discovered. But there is another track and according to the photograph the track we want is slightly back on itself, which that is, and ten canopies in. Up here, and when I say ten canopies in, I wish I could mean ten trees in, because that would be easy. But if you look at the top, where I've got the tallest canopies, it's ten of those. Let's count trees anyway. One, two, three. What are you doing down the forest? Counting trees. One, six, seven, eight. Eight into the distance. Mm -hmm. I'll wake you up when we get there. This is looking promising. I wonder if these wheel tracks could have been made by those great big American trucks, the six wheel drive jobbies, as they took the uh, ordinance from the railway head into the forest here. That's my theory. Great hump in the track. I don't think anything Land Rover size would have enough ground clearance for that one. That'd be something pretty big. Nine, ten. And we're back to the Forestry Commission Road. Which puts the uh, bomb dump and amongst all those ferns. Certainly different to what we've, uh, the undergrowth we've seen elsewhere. I know I'm clutching at straws. And look. A footpath heads straight through what would have been the uh, dump then. What's this going to tell us? remnants of a wall. Oh, there's nothing else here, no other function. That's got to have been the boundary of the dump. Brilliant. We found something folks. Humour me. Stones scattered around. Plus the odd stump. Purpose unknown. This space would have been filled with all sorts of armament, I guess. It's certainly a level area, and it's big enough. But, uh, no hard standing. Possibly wasn't any. I'm going to this next clear patch and calling it a day. This is where we find everything I've said so far is absolute rubbish with a different explanation. If you look this side, which is outside the bomb dump, the ground is uh, a lot clearer. But if you come round here, into the bomb dump, it's a lot greener. Another clue, I don't know why, I don't know what the reason is, but another clue I fancy. Some heavy duty water pipe. Wartime vintage, anybody? Certainly old. I wonder what treasures lie in there. An old mess tin, a knife, a fork, the odd hand grenade. Bye right, folks, we're on our way back. Uh, having said that, I've got to find my way out now. There's so many lefts and rights and turns. I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am sure, yeah. 
Gotta say that in case my wife's watching. Friday. Two guys complaining about my film, I expect. Well, I didn't think I was going to say this, but I'm counting that as a success. Not bad. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the journey. Well, if you think it was a waste of time, come with me next Friday and we'll waste a bit more time. On every Friday, folks. Catch you on the next one.